just put all this together for us, the recent news, uh, and also really as it pertains to underlying indicators like monthly sales, for example, which are still contracting, has anything changed for you guys? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, thanks, David. Um, yeah, we, we definitely see that um, the market is still quite challenging in, um, in the next uh, 6 to 12 months period. There are a lot of uncertainties. Um, certainly, we also uh, saw that the Chinese government has taken more actions to try to stabilize the market, um, like the relaxation of the policies on home purchases. We also seen some um, measures to support demand, like lowering the mortgage rate and mortgage down payment. And all these measures, we believe that we will be um, positive to, to the sector and stimulate some demand, particularly in those cities that has taken actions or relaxations um, to support home purchases. But however, um, the prospects are still quite uncertain. First of all, um, the macro conditions and the sector condition is much weaker than, than before. And home buyers are still concerned about the um, prospect of the sector recovery, about their um, own situation, like the employment status, uh, income prospects, as well as also if uh, they are going to purchase homes, will there be any concern or risk about the, the completion of the properties they purchase? And with these uh, uncertainties still hanging there, I think um, the, the sectors, even though we have seen lots of measures coming out, we still need to see how effective this measure and restore the confidence. And in, in our view, and even though they are positive, they will take time to, to take effect. Right. So maybe good on sentiment. Um, what are you seeing in terms of, you know, when the breakdown from tier one, tier two, tier three cities here right now, when it comes to the, the declines in contracted sales and the like, is it still, broadly speaking, weaker across the board? Or are you seeing nuances in between? Yeah, broadly speaking, we still see the um, demand in, for, for new homes is uh, more resilient in high tier cities, particularly the first tier cities in their core areas. And also because the supply in these areas are also limited. And, and, and if we look at the economic fundamental of these high tier cities, they are also uh, better and, and population there are also more affluent. When there are more uh, stronger economic activities in these cities, there would also more job opportunities for people living there mm. and support home demand and home purchases. And comparatively, if we look at the lower tier cities and even some tier two cities in a less um, affluent areas, you, um, we will see that the economic conditions are weaker and also have higher impact on their on their home uh, sales in the past one to two years. And on top, uh, we are seeing that also the supply situation or inventory level in these cities has been high. And even though there has been some recovery in this market, they will also need time to um, digest those stock in the market. So um, this will also track the new home sales in these lower tier cities. Right. Kevin, I want to get your thoughts on uh, not so much Country Garden, but I'll bring up the Country Garden example from yesterday. Uh, so they, they missed bond payments, the Yuan bonds. Um, and they're now saying, and this is really a test of the program they put in a few years ago, I think two years ago, um, the China bond insurance to, uh, to to come in and guarantee the bonds of developers that then can't make the payments like Country Garden did yesterday. I'm wondering how you factor in a guarantee from the state uh, into the credit profiles of these developers, for example. How much has it helped or have we not yet seen a, a successful test case to change your mind? Um, we will see it more a broadly kind of a um, arrangement for individual developers mm. in getting their financing. And as we have seen that the unsecured or capital markets uh, for these Chinese developers have become um, virtually shut down, particularly for privately owned developers over the last two years. That has been very difficult for them to issue bonds either onshore or offshores. And with this um, China bond insurance guarantee arrangement, 
some of these um, privately owned developers can raise certain funding from the markets. Of course, they need to provide some securities or correctionals to get the guarantee and then issue the bonds. And in our assessment, um, definitely that will provide some support to their uh, funding assets and provide them with some liquidity to service their bonds uh, repayments. But um, we also need to assess, say, to what extent uh, they can get funding through these channels. And so far, we have seen um, the amount that developers that can get, get uh, funding from this channel uh, is not a significant amount compared to their refinancing needs. So um, in a nutshell, even though uh, we see that this is a way that could help developers to raise funding through the capital markets, but it does not really help to resolve the uh, refinancing needs or uh, liquidity uh, problems in, in the near term. And they still need to do raise further funding to meet their refinancing needs, which is quite sizable. And it's very fundamental and critical to the developers is that their operation has to be recovered because the property sales, the right. uh, operating flow generate them should be the key cash flow for them to support their debt financing. Um, Kevin, we mentioned about some of these demand measures to, to maybe stoke some more um, sentiment in terms of buying. What about the, some of the, 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 I guess, some of the measures in terms of supply that we heard from that Politburo meeting just a few weeks ago? The fact that they're looking at maybe reducing that, that the amount of inventories of some of these developers as well, whether it's some sort of urban village redevelopment program or even some sort of national acquisition platform. How, how big of a bazooka would that be in turning this housing market around? Yeah, um, and we still see, need to see how the execution of these um, types of uh, supportive measures, um, um, how, it's, how it play out in, in the next uh, six to 12 months periods. I think um, to some extent that will help to digest some of the supply in the market. But however, um, particularly in low tier cities, when we look at the data, uh, the inventory level in these cities are actually pretty pretty high, still at a high level. And demand there is also um, quite muted compared to previous years. And therefore, the, there's been a strong supply demand imbalance in these areas. And unless the program is rolled out in a um, very significant manner and also in a last for a long period of time, it will be difficult to resolve the problems in the low tier cities in particular. Um, but of course, in high tier cities, we yeah. do, as I said, that there will be more resilient Kevin. demand, be more strong incentive to them to purchase if they get this kind of incentive Kevin. to get the yeah. uh, funding. Kevin, in 10 seconds or so, on the ratings aspect, should we expect more negative ratings action from you guys? Yeah, um, if we look at our rated um, developers, majority of them still have a negative outlook. And that actually reflecting okay. that they have a facing a challenges in the operating environment. And also a uh, number of them also facing refinancing, uh, sizable refinancing needs. And that will continue yeah. to pressure their rate if the market doesn't recover.